Hello! So, in this video, we're going to go over the code for cameras. So, as always, all the code is available on GitHub, link in the description. So, the first thing we do is we have a general camera class. So, in the last episode, I only talked about one type of camera. But you can actually create rays in all sorts of different ways. There's not this one way of uh, converting points on an image into rays. Um, but for the moment, we're only going to actually uh, implement one type of camera. Uh, I've just set it out like this. So if we ever decide in future that we want more, then we'll be able to do that without too much difficulty. So the one important thing a camera needs to do is to make a ray from some point on an image. So this vector 2, their coordinates from negative 1 to 1 in both the x and y. Uh, as we discussed in the last video. So then our specific camera, the perspective camera. So the things we need to store for this are, as we discussed previously, its origin, its forward vector, its up vector, its right vector, and then also the height and the width that we're allowing. So our constructor, as we said, doesn't take all of this information. Instead, it takes an origin, a target, and an up guide, and it uses that to calculate its origin, forward, up, and right. And then it also takes in an FOV and an aspect ratio, which it then uses to calculate H and W. So if we go and look at how this is done, firstly, the origin is just given the value that uh, is passed into the, the function. And now the forward vector is just going from the origin to the target. So I discussed this subtraction to get that vector in a previous video, and then we want to normalize it to give it the right length. Uh, these all need to have length 1. Um, the right and up vectors are then also created using the, uh, the formulas we discussed, though we don't need to normalize the up vector. The reason for this is that if we take the cross products of two vectors that both have length 1 and are at right angles to each other, the result also has length 1. So in fact, because right and forward have these properties, up will always have length 1, so we don't need to normalize it, and we can save a little bit of time there, uh, because we're only doing this once in, in each scene. It doesn't really matter, but it's not necessary. So we then need to set h and w. So these are, again, using the same formulas we discussed. We just take the tangent of the field of view for the height, and the width we then just multiply that by the aspect ratio. So then the last thing in the camera is to actually make a ray. And this is very simple. Using the, the simple forward plus the x-coordinate times w times right, and the same thing for up. And then all we need to do is return the ray created from the origin of the camera and this direction. But we do need to normalize this uh, this vector, or we'll have uh, incorrect distances uh, later on. So now that we've set up a camera, we can actually start thinking about producing images. So I've also gone ahead and created this image class. So this is very simple. It just stores a big list of floating point values and they're just grayscale. We'll discuss colour in the next episode, and then we'll get a, an upgrade to this image class. But for the moment, it's a grayscale image. I won't go into the details of these functions, um, but the getPixel function returns a pointer to the actual data, which allows the function that got the pixel to then make changes. So that's how we actually fill in the data for this for these images. Um, and the save image uh, function, I use the Qt library to save images. So all I'm doing is passing it off to that library, because dealing with file uh, IO is tedious and unnecessary when there are libraries to do it for us. So I won't go into the specific code for the image class, but in the main function, I've added uh, this ray trace. So this function takes a blank image and it will fill in this picture. And it will also take the camera 
and the scene. So then it needs to go through each pixel in the image. Uh, and then it needs to decide what it should put in that pixel. So the first thing we need to do is get the coordinates that we can pass to the camera. Uh, because we can't do any ray tracing until we have a ray. So this is another formula that I went through in the previous video. So all we're doing is we're converting the x and y pixel coordinates to be in our slightly funny negative one to one coordinate system instead. And then once we have that vector, we can just pass it into the, the make ray function of the camera. And now we also get ready the, uh, the current pixel, the one that we're going to fill in. And then once we have that, the last thing to do is the actual ray tracing. So that's create an intersection object from the ray and then pass it into the scene to see if it hits anything. And now this will return true if it does hit, in which case we set it the pixel to be white. And if it doesn't hit, it will give false and we set the pixel to be black. So for the moment, this is very simple. Um, we, we will be expanding on this function a lot in future. But for the moment, this allows us to test that everything we've done so far is uh, correct. Um, and then the main function, it doesn't really do anything too interesting. It sets up all of the data to pass to the ray trace function, and that's about it. So it sets up its width and its height, creates an image object, creates a camera object, um, it creates a scene. So in our scene, we have a plane and a sphere that rests on that plane. And now once it's got all of these variables set up, it passes them into the ray trace function, and then it will save the image to a specific file. So when, when we run this code, this is the image we get. So there's really not much to see at the moment. It's hard to tell it's even 3D. Um, but this is because we, we haven't introduced any lighting or any colour yet. So in the next video we'll add colour, which we'll then use to tell apart the different objects in the scene. And following that we'll start thinking about lighting, which is when it will really start looking 3D and actually look good, rather than just, well, whatever this image looks like. So, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you again. Goodbye.